1970s, Saudi Arabia had become increasingly aware of the strategic importance of its natural resource. It started to negotiate for the ownership of Aramco. At the same time, the Arab-Israeli conflict was brewing without resolution. That was a fight. This was a war. It began two days earlier in the Middle East. Egypt and Syria are at war with Israel today. For the first time since the Six-Day War of 1967, Egyptian tanks and helicopters crossed the Suez Canal while Syrian forces moved on the Israeli-occupied Golan Heights. The Mideast acted, the superpowers reacted. This was the first view of the huge American airlift in the skies over Israel. On October 19th, President Nixon requested $2.2 billion emergency aid for Israel. The Soviet Union was helping the Arabs. The stakes had risen, but with renewed determination and American arms, Israel successfully counterattacked. Ultimately, Arab forces were driven back. The shooting stopped. A delicate equilibrium was restored. But the Arabs made an economic power play. As punishment for this country's support of Israel, 11 Arab countries cut off all oil shipments to the United States. We are heading toward the most acute shortages of energy since World War II. With the oil embargo, an existing gasoline shortage became worse. Heating oil also was in short supply. This turnpike, usually crowded with trucks and automobiles at this time of the year, is practically deserted. Now it's a mighty long way down the dusty trail, and the sun burns hot on the coast today. The oil embargo's biggest casualty was the big car. If you want more for your trade, go see Cal. Better deals are never made. Go see Cal. Cal Worthington was a Dodge dealer in Los Angeles. One day we were selling cars like crazy, and the next day, disaster. The oil embargo came along, and... Uh, couldn't sell big cars at all. As a matter of fact, people that had bought big cars were bringing them back and leaving them on the lot. So here, I, I don't want it. I won't be able to buy gas for it. Same. 